Hey, Algebra students, how you doing? Today we're going to talk about factoring. This is our intro to factoring. You've probably seen it before, but uh, it's good to kind of refresh your memory. So, first question that people always have is, why? Why am I doing this? Why factor? Well, I'll tell you why you factor. To solve equations. There's a lot of times where we have quadratic equations where we want to know, in particular, we want to know when does that quadratic uh, equation equal zero? And, uh, well, here's one right there, okay? I have this thing, x squared minus 3x minus 40 equals 0. How can I figure out um, how to solve that? Well, the first thing I would do is I would factor it, okay? So if I'm factoring this, I'm going to say, well, this is going to be uh, x minus 8 times x plus 5 equals 0. How did you do that, you say? Well, I'll show you in just a second, okay? But for now, what I want to point out is, look, I've taken this, uh, this quadratic function, this polynomial, and we'll talk more about what those are in the future, but I've taken this function here and I've turned it into a product. I've turned it into something times something else. Now think about it for a second. If you have one thing times another thing equals zero, what does it say about those two things? One of them has to be zero, okay? Just think about it for a second. You have two numbers multiplied by each other and they equal zero. That can't be unless one of them actually is 0. So what that tells me is either x minus 8 is 0 or x plus 5 is 0. Well, now it becomes really easy because I say, okay, well, x minus 8 is 0. That means x equals 8. Or x plus 5 equals 0. That means x equals negative 5. And there are our two answers, 8 or negative 5, okay? That's the why. Now let's look at how we do it, okay? So, first off, before we start factoring, let's remember how to multiply binomials because what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna go, basically we're gonna, we're gonna go backwards in multiplying binomials. So, let's start with an example. x plus three times x minus two. And what we get is x squared minus two x plus three x minus six. We get four terms there. How do we get those four terms? There's a bunch of different ways you can look at this. You can say, uh, you can use the FOIL method, which uh, is fairly popular. FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. So my first two terms would be this one and this one. X times X is X squared. My outside terms would be this one and this one. X times negative two, that gives me negative two X. My inside terms would be three times X, which would give me three X. And my last two terms would be this one and this one, 3 times negative 2, which gets me negative 6. That's a perfectly good way to do it. Uh, another way to do it that is very popular is you make a little box. It's sort of analogous to area. You say, well, this box is x, this length right here is x, this length right here is 3, this length right here is x, and this length right here somehow is negative 2. Don't try to visualize it too much, but... This is just going to symbolize negative 2. So an x by x squared is x squared. x by 3 gets me 3x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6. And what you'll notice is these four terms here are these four terms here. So it doesn't matter if you use FOIL, if you use this box, if you multiply it vertically like we would multiply two-digit numbers. Uh, it, we're all we're doing the same thing no matter how you do it and what and what that is is coming up with these four terms generally you can combine a couple of them and here we have negative 2x plus 3x which gets me x okay so what that means is any number that I plug in for x this equation and this equation are absolutely identical let's uh, take an example let's plug in the number 1 for x 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, right? Well, now let's plug 1 into this equation here. We get 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1, that makes 2, minus 6 is negative 4. Okay? And what you'll find is it works for any number at all. That this and this are identical. Uh, they're, well, it's an identity, okay? That these, are, uh, these mean the exact same thing. Okay? Next one. We have x plus 5 times x minus 1. Okay, 
uh, let's go ahead and use FOIL. It worked pretty well last time. So we'll say x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. x times 5 is 5x. And if I combine my negative 1x plus my 5x, I get 4x. And then x, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And you'll see that this uh, follows the pattern all the way down. x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. x times 3 is 3x. 7x plus 3x is 10x. 7 times 3 is 21. Okay? And uh, you can hit the pause button and check for yourself that these are all uh, exactly right. But one thing that I want to point out to you is we can take a shortcut. Because, well, actually, before we take our shut shortcut, let me... Let me put in a disclaimer. All of these problems, all of these examples here have something in common, and that is the first term in each binomial is just x, and the second term is a constant. Okay? So the, the pattern that I'm going to show you here is true when you have x plus a constant or x minus a constant times x plus a constant times, or x minus a constant. Okay? If, you, uh, if that varies, then we have to make some, uh, some variations to our, uh, our, our method that we're going to come up with here. But what we see is, briefly, our first term is always x squared. Our second term is the sum of these two numbers times x. So 5 plus negative 1 is 4. 3 plus 7 is 10. Negative 2 plus negative 8 is negative 10. Negative 6 plus 6 is well, zero, and so therefore there's no middle term there. And then three plus three is six. What about the last term? Well, the middle term is actually the hardest one because that's the one that's, uh, that's the combination of two different terms. The last one is very simply five times negative one, negative five. Three times seven, 21. Negative two times negative eight, positive 16. Negative six times six, negative 36. Three times three, nine. So it makes it really fast if I have something like, oh, x plus 7 times x minus 4. I'm going to look at this and say, okay, that's a x squared. 7 minus 4 is 3x. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. And voila, got it done right there. Okay? So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going backwards. Okay? We're going to start with something here, and we're going to go backwards using that pattern that we just saw a second ago, okay? So, here we go. Got some examples here. First off, x squared minus 2x minus 8. So what I'm looking for, I'm going to have two binomials here, okay? They're going to both start with x, okay? Now I'm looking for two numbers whose sum is negative 2 and the product is negative 8. Let's see. Well, if the product is negative 8, that means, well, it's a negative product. That means I have a positive number times a negative number. So let me put that in there. It's positive times negative. And, uh, well, let's see. And when I'm adding a positive number and a negative number, I'm actually not adding. I'm actually subtracting. So what I'm looking for is two numbers that, uh, whose product is 8, whose difference is 2. And that would be 4 and 2. Okay? And in particular, it's going to be positive 2 and negative 4, because when I add positive 2 and negative 4, I get negative 2. So this is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 4, and that works. Check it. Multiply it. See if it works. It does. Let's do the next one. Now I'm looking for two numbers whose sum is negative 9, and the product is positive 20. Okay, think about this. The sum is negative but the product is positive, that means I got two negative numbers, okay? And uh, what numbers add up to 9, multiply together to be 20? That'd be 4 and 5. So that means I'm going to have, again, x and x, and it's going to be negative 4 plus negative 5 gets me negative 9, so this is going to be x minus 4 times x minus 5. Ta-da! Got it. All right? Next one. Well, this time it's just plus and plus. It's going to be easy. Plus, plus, and I've got two numbers that add up to 15, multiply together, together to be 56. I believe that's going to be 8 and 7. Got it. 
Uh, next one is weird looking. Uh, there's only two terms here. Uh, well, first one, first off, which, which one's missing? It's the middle term that's missing. This is like, uh, I would think of this as x squared plus 0 times x minus 64. So that means I want two numbers that add up to 0 whose product is negative 64. Well, if they add up to 0, one's positive, one's negative, they got the same absolute value, right? And uh, so I'm just going to look for, uh, it's going to be 8 and negative 8. I'm just going to look for the square root of that to make one positive, one negative. So this is going to be x plus 8 times x minus 8. And by the way, you should know that it doesn't matter what order you have these, uh, these factors in. Commutative law of multiplication, y'all. Come on. Uh, all right. Now, next one. This also looks weird. Uh, x squared minus 3x, and then there's no, there's no uh, third term there. So this time we have a middle term, but we don't have a third term. So that means our product is 0, and our middle term is, and, and our sum is negative 3. Well, that's negative 3 and 0, right? So this would be x minus 3 and x plus 0. Well, that looks kind of silly. So let's just call that x. And really, a better way to write that would be just x times x minus 3. And now that I look at that, I think, well, yeah, sure. If I just distribute the x, I would get x squared minus 3x. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was easy. Last one here. And this time I have... Uh, Put my x's there. Okay, again, this is going to be a negative product, which means I have a positive times a negative, and my sum is going to be negative 1. My product is negative 90. And again, remember when we're adding a positive and negative number, what we're actually doing is subtracting, right? So that means I want uh, two numbers whose difference is 1, right there, whose product is 90. That would be 9 and 10. And specifically, I want it to be positive 9 and negative 10, because when I add positive 9 plus negative 10, I get a negative 1 there. So I'm going to say x plus 9, x minus 10. Okay? This gets you a pretty good start on factoring. Watch the next video, and we'll start factoring some, uh, some uh, uh, trinomials that do not fit into this uh, pattern right here. Okay? See you then.